Okay, welcome to our introduction to agriculture lecture and the slides I stole from a guy named David Palmer, but uh, it's Miss Gall, your handy dandy lecturer, and we're going to go ahead and start our um, lecture by doing a little bit of economic geography, just because that's going to be kind of a big piece of what we're doing over the next few units. So we'll give you a little bit of a preview and you'll see how this kind of helps fill in with some of the others. So the first sector of the economy to talk about is um, what's called a primary sector. And the primary sector has to do with extracting resources or with using the earth. Okay, so um, farming and agriculture is a primary economic activity. Mining is a primary economic activity. Um, logging is a primary economic activity. Anything like that where we're pulling things out of the earth, those are all primary economic activities. Okay, then secondary economic activities, what we're doing is we're taking all of that stuff that we pulled out of the earth or that we made from the earth and we're turning it into manufactured goods of some sort. So we're altering it, we're changing it, we're um, making it for the market. Okay, so think of this as manufacturing um, is really secondary economic activity. Tertiary economic activity. This is where we're starting to get into actually sales, service, things like that. Anything to do with marketing and selling to the masses. That's tertiary economic activity. Okay, and then our the last section we're going to talk about right now is what's called quaternary economic activity. Okay, and this is really anything related to information and gathering and using information. Um, so quaternary activities are people like college professors, um, people like your high school teachers, uh, Google is dedicated entirely to quaternary activities because their mission in life of course is to make all take all the information in the world and make it accessible. Um, but really anybody who's doing any kind of research or research and development type of activities, they're all quaternary um, activities and part of why I bring this up this early in is we're going to see a little bit of each of these as it applies to agriculture we're going to talk a little bit about each of these as we run through this lecture and then we'll keep coming back to these ideas so these are ones you want to make sure you understand <clears throat> okay so um, some of the key topics when we're talking about agriculture when we're talking about rural land use we need to look at types of agriculture okay and um, there's really two major sub branches of agriculture. We've got commercial agriculture and subsistence agriculture. And commercial agriculture is when you're growing entirely or almost entirely for the market to gain money. These are typically large-scale operations. They are what are called monocultures, which is a fancy way of saying they grow a single crop. Okay. And the reason why they're monocultures is because it's cheaper to grow a single crop on your land. It requires less knowledge, fewer inputs, things like that. Okay, But the whole goal is to take what you've got and sell it. And take what you're making and sell it. And this is the predominant type of agriculture here in the United States. Okay, um, Subsistence agriculture on the other hand is uh, is done to, for consumption by the local population. Okay, It's typically small scale, it's typically low tech, and it's most frequently found in less developed areas of the world. Okay, that's not to say that you can't find subsistence agriculture here in the U.S., right? But um, most typically when we're talking about people who are doing that, it's those less developed places and what they're growing is going to be eaten within a 10 or 20 mile radius of where it's grown. Okay, um, and then we also need to split it up and talk about agriculture in terms of how intensively we use the land. Okay, and intensive land use just means how hard are we on the land. Okay, so these are farms that might be smaller, but for sure what they require is high inputs of labor and they get high outputs per acre. Okay, so if it's intensive, lots in, lots out. That's the easiest way to think about it. Okay. <clears throat> and on the other hand, extensive land use is um, lots and lots of land, large, large areas, but very low inputs of labor and very low outputs. Okay. So um, 
a, most farming as we think of farming here in the US is going to be intensive land use. Okay. Ranching, on the other hand, cattle herding, things like that, that's very extensive land use. Okay. Because it requires a lot of land and doesn't give us a lot of output per acre. <clears throat> And then we, we can also talk about agriculture in terms of labor intensive and capital intensive. And you'll notice here what I'm doing as we're talking about all these is their studies in contrast. Okay, so labor intensive agriculture means that there's lots of human work, lots of human beings putting in lots of time and lots of physical labor. Okay, capital intensive on the other hand, this is lots of equipment, buildings, etc but a lot less human labor okay, is applied to get a given unit of output. And in the US, we tend to do a lot more capital intensive agriculture and capital intensive agriculture tends to be those larger scale operations in more developed countries. Labor intensive agriculture, on the other hand, tends to be smaller scale operations. It's more likely to be found in subsistence farming economies. Okay, so, um, Speaking of subsistence farming economies, what we've got here is a world map. And just to give you some idea of kind of what types of um, economic activity tend to exist where. Okay, so if we look at our map here, we can look at kind of our northern regions tend to be nomadic herding, forestry, fishing, hunting. Mostly it's for subsistence, right? So Alaska, northern Canada, um, much of Russia right, especially northern Russia, commercial crop and agriculture, most of Europe, most of the eastern and midwestern United States, some parts of South America, right, and you can go on down the list, but um, it, just in terms of some regions and some things you need to know that'll help you out, if we're looking at intensive subsistence, a lot of times what we're looking at is those subtropical monsoon areas and monsoons are like huge heavy rainstorms where it rains for a month or more straight just pours and then it it dries out after that okay so subtropical just means we're looking at below the tropics shifting cultivation um, tends to occur in tropical forests and savannas and shifting cultivation literally means that what you're doing is you're farming an area for a while and then you're going to someplace else and you're farming that and then you're going someplace else and you're farming that and you're kind of making your way around and you're giving the land time to recover in between. Okay, nomadic herding. Um, so nomadic, of course, moving around, right? And herding has to do with moving animals with you in semi-arid or arid lands. And that word arid just means dry, just means dry. Um, our commercial farming, again, these are predominantly high income regions. We've already touched on that. For crop farming, it tends to be in more humid climates, and livestock ranching tends to be in drier climates. Okay, and you do kind of want to have some idea about this, just the broad strokes. So that's our introduction to agriculture lecture. It, basically, again, what we did was covered um, just some broad strokes about different types of agriculture and different ways of using the land keep your eye out because our next step we're going to start we're going to go back in history and we're going to talk about different agricultural revolutions and we're going to talk a little bit about the industrial revolution and the impact that has had on agriculture and on what we're seeing today so i hope you enjoyed the lecture have a good weekend and if you have any questions bring them into class the next time you see me